Greetings there, adventurers. Today I greet you as Robin of Loxley, known colloquially as Robin Hood. And today we're going to be talking about what it is that I'm wearing, because you might have noticed that I'm wearing an awful lot of different things compared to what I usually do here. Really quick explanation here, though. Costuming for a Renaissance Fair is very different than costuming for reenactment. Um, or what we do, which is not historical, but fantasy and anachronistic reenactment here on the channel. The, the goal here is to be easily identifiable as Robin Hood, as a member of the cast, from a great distance, um, and then look really, really good when you're up close. But it is, not, it is not intended to be historically accurate. And that's partly why we're doing the video, because what we do here on the channel is so different from what actors do. Um, but being an actor myself, it's really interesting for me now to compare those two things and see what it is and why it is that things are done for costume design in, 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 the, in the theatrical or Hollywood stages versus what it is that is actually practically applicable. So now we can now we can marry those two things. Hi, Future Kramer here to give you this very important message. Now, I am able to do this video because I was in the Robin Hood's Fair, and the Robin Hood's Fair is brought to you in part by iHeartRadio. And the owners of the fair would also like me to share with you that they are big supporters of the Connecticut Humane Society, which helps uh, foster and give new homes to all of the animals that are uh, needing a home in Connecticut. So I am not affiliated with either of these parties, but Robin Hood's fair is. So you can check out all three of those things, iHeartRadio, the Connecticut Humane Society, and the Robin Hood's fair link, as well as the Connecticut Renaissance fair link, all down in the description below. Thanks, back to the video. As I always say, costumes start from the ground up. So I am wearing my own personal boots that I usually wear. All of my base layers are my own. I'm wearing uh, this linen shirt that you've all probably seen before if you've been watching my videos. These pants that I'm wearing are not new to me, but they're new to the channel here. I'm going to be doing a review of them. These are adventurers pants from Medieval Collectibles. They are faux suede and they've actually held up very, very well. For being faux suede, I thought they would uh, be prone to trapping dust or dirt and just getting dirty really easily, but they but they really don't, and they, they haven't overheated on me at all. And they fit a nice color scheme for the costume there. Moving on up, we have the uh, tunic that they made for me. It does have detachable sleeves, like lots of my personal garb does. It does have laces on the side here. I don't touch those, I just lace it up in the front. It, it doesn't take that long. I'm not sure if laces in the fronts of costumes are, are technically historically accurate. Again, not the purpose, but we, we like to know things here. And my costumer did want me to add something she thought was really cool in that th these textured pieces on the front here they're a curtain. Just get creative. I am wearing two belts here. I have my normal utility belt and then separately I have the sword belt so that if I wanted to take just the sword off, I don't have to undo everything about my costume and I can still have the belt. So on my utility belt, I have my uh, water bottle here that I made. Talked about that in a previous video if you want to check that out. It's held up really, really well. I've dropped it on concrete, I've dropped it on gravel. There's barely any scuff marks on it and it definitely isn't broken even though it's just glass covered in leather. So it's held up really, really well. And I actually like this better than lots of the cups that I have because it allows me to carry around liquid on my belt without having to worry about it spilling. Next, I have my large pouch here. This was from Medieval Collectibles. This is mine. I, I keep a couple of snacks in here, my tokens so that people know that I work on the fair. Now, nothing really important in here. And I don't have my phone or any modern personal items on me. So, so it's, it's actually mostly there for show and just in case I need it. Um, and, and, and that's all there is. I have my dagger uh, slid in Behind that, this is a stage combat dagger, so it's not sharp. I'm not, I'm not damaging my equipment or anything. Uh, but I chose to wear it behind the pouch here because it does emulate some historical pouches that we see where there's a scabbard built directly into the pouch or attached behind it so that you can wear it as, as one unit. Thought that was interesting. And I wanted to add the dagger personally. Originally, my costume design didn't have it, but I wanted to add it 
specifically in case I wanted to take the sword off, but I still wanted to have that sort of look. But we're gonna move around here to the other side. I do have my eating knife tucked in here underneath the sword frog, so it's not in danger of popping out uh, or anything. That's just there, and then I have my whetstone here underneath as well. And I really wanted to include these things because it, it, it does help elevate the costume from just being, oh, someone that like looks different than the rest of us. This is, this is a living person that does things outside of when I'm seeing him at fair and it just brings the immersion up a little bit. If, if for no one else, then for me. <laughs> but I, I'm hoping someone notices it and it's like, oh, that's cool. Because that's, that's probably about the extent of a, a reaction that you would have if you saw that. Um, all right, so this sword, also a stage combat sword. And the reason it's a stage combat sword and not my real one is because, yes, I could bring my real one, they would piece tie it because it's sharp. Um, but theoretically, if I were to be around Queen Eleanor of Aquitaine, who is the monarch, King Richard, and Prince John's mother, if I were to be around her and she was going to be knighting one of the children that attends the festival, you know, because that's what we do for kids, and Sir William Marshall, her escort, was not with her, she would need a sword with which to do that, so they gave me this, this blunt one, so that should the occasion arise, uh, we could do that. So the problem that I've encountered with the sword um, is that one, take it back out again here, so it is the exact same length as my personal bastard sword. Uh, the problem is that the handle is about <laughs> like six inches shorter and because there's uh let me go ahead and take this off the wall here so you can see that the taper uh this one is mine this one's the one they lent me the taper here uh, is significantly more on my personal one which means that it's a lot lighter towards the tip whereas this one it does have a fuller but the the blade on the sword that they gave me uh is is literally twice as thick as my personal one. So it, it is a lot less well balanced and because even though the blades are the same length because of the way uh, the frog that they gave me sits the the point where it attaches on my belt is much higher than the point where the actual sword hilt is stopped by the frog. So that means that the blade hangs very low and um, I, I encountered issues where the frog would slide back and forth on my belt a lot, and if it was too far forward, then it was uncomfortable, and if it was too far back, I would kick it with my heels. Um, and this belt is actually thick enough that the um, loop that I made to tighten it around me did get loose as I was walking around, so eventually the sword would hang low enough that it was touching the ground, and I would constantly have be having to readjust it. So so there, 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 was, there were issues with the sword. That's why I wanted to have the dagger in case on a certain day it just became too much and I wanted to take it off. But I never did. I persevered because because we like the look, we like the silhouette. And so part of the walk that I developed was essentially to hold the bow under the crook of my arm here um, and just hold it like that and then brace my hand on the, so on the pommel of the sword so that I could control where all of my points were so I wasn't going to walk past someone and accidentally whack them. Um, and on a crowded day, that is something that I definitely needed to be aware of. So we'll go ahead and talk about the bow. This, this bow is almost as tall as me. I'm five foot seven, which means it's something like 67 inches. This is um, an Osage bow. It's between 35 and 40 pounds draw weight, and it is uh, backed with snake skin here. This was lent to me as a prop by one of the owners, but he does use it when he shoots from horseback. So I had the privilege to be able to use that. And so the bow actually came with this little uh, leather cap here as well and originally I thought it was just to protect uh, the bottom end from being hurt uh, if you were to place it on the ground and rest it but so no one told me this I just sort of discovered that when the bow is unstrung you know so you're supposed to keep one end of the bowstring attached on the knock and the other one just comes down um, just comes down over the bow but in order to keep the one that's still attached from falling off you put the little cap on and then tie it off and that and that keeps the bow from <laughs> from losing its string as accidentally in transport and so when i was walking around uh, with the bow as well i had to make sure that anytime i stopped and needed to rest that i put uh, the tip that was going to be going on the ground actually uh, on the toe of my boot so that uh, i wasn't damaging the bow itself and if it ever looked like i was leaning on it for like uh, any 
any character reason, just to sort of be at ease. Um, I'm not actually putting any weight on, on the bow either. It's a little trick. It's a little trick to make people think that, you know, that I'm, that I'm, that I'm resting, that, you know, it's my trusty sort of thing, just leaning on it, but I'm not actually putting any weight on it. Um, you can see here that the brace height of the bow is actually pretty small. Um, which means that when I was shooting, the problem that I encountered was that it did constantly slap against my arm. Uh, so what I've done here, we'll move on up to the bracers here, is I actually have my modern archery arm guard tucked in underneath my leather bracers, and you wouldn't even really tell that that was there, but it does protect me uh, when I'm getting to use this. So the leather bracers uh, we added just to add a little bit more of that color and dimension here, so it's not just full-on white all the way down my arms. Um, this one in particular really limits my wrist mobility, and I talked about that in a previous video. I really don't, I really don't like wearing bracers. Um, there's nothing to keep them up. The thicker part of your arm always makes them slide down to the thinnest part of your arm, which is your wrist, and then it gets in the way. I've had bruising from these things. Um, so if I personally were to be setting up my adventuring gear, I would essentially never wear these. Um, but they look good for the costume, and they, they, they've pervaded They've pervaded the modern perception of what a medieval costume looks like so much that people are sort of expecting to see them. Um, so that's why we put them on. I have this green hood. It had a leery pipe and they cut it off. Um, that's just fun to know. <laughs> um, and I'm using my larger brooch here because to be completely honest, I lost my smaller one. Yes, I know. Very sad, very depressing. I wore it for the first day of the fair and I never saw it again. I have no idea where I put it or what happened to it. So we're using the big one now, but it helps keep the hood from sliding around my body uh, because of this next piece, the very awesome quiver that I was also lent uh, by the owner of the bow and the fair. Very nice, very nice. So this, is, this quiver uh, does attach on the back via this uh, three belt system so I don't have to worry about it constantly sliding down or sliding up my back here. It stays on very nice. Uh, it's got this nice comfortable heavy shoulder pad here. It does trap an awful lot of heat though. Of all the items that I'm wearing, the leather pieces are what trapped the most heat on my body. I'm wearing two belts. One of them is very, very thick, so my entire midsection here is covered and doesn't breathe because of the leather. Uh, my arms don't breathe and neither does my shoulder now, especially when I'm wearing the hood underneath it. I also just wanted to show off how absolutely stained this shirt got from the amount of leather I was wearing in the heat that I was wearing it in. These arrows were lent to me by our stage manager to use. You can see that they have this uh, very nice, uh, beautiful green fletching here, very Robin Hood-esque. But so he is, he's a big guy, probably like at least a foot and a half taller than me. So these arrows are actually a lot longer than the ones that I personally use. Like they're almost arming sword length on me. So they're, they're actually a little bit difficult to pull out of the quiver. Luckily, I never had to do that. Um, because I didn't shoot these when I was doing archery demonstrations. There was one, there's one point during the, during the fair day where we have uh, the queen's boons and favors. So um, the sheriff and I have a confrontation there. He threatens to draw his sword and I threaten to draw an arrow, but I never, I never fully draw it uh, for, for safety reasons. Just, you know, if there's a little kid that's running around, we don't want them to get scared or potentially hurt if something goes wrong. We just need to be able to control that. And then all the way up here, we have my hat. And underneath my hat, my hair, which I'm doing in the classic half up, half down style with the, with the sides let down. Uh, I talk about that in my medieval hair for men video. The historically accurate thing would obviously be to just cut my bangs completely flat, but uh, you know, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna do that. So I just tie it back. It is a historically accurate shape. And I want it, um, when, one day it was raining, right? One day it was like just pouring and it was very, very cold, like uncharacteristically cold, you know, for late May. It was like 30 degrees. And I wanted to wear my hood up with my hat on top of it because that is a historical way to wear that. And we, we were told not to do that because it looks ridiculous, which is true. Uh, so there's there's another example of how what we're doing isn't meant to be historically accurate because honestly, what looks historically accurate, what is historically accurate, looks really odd sometimes, um, and it doesn't portray the um, 
it doesn't give off the atmosphere that we're actually trying to propagate at the fair. It, people would just be like, why, why are you doing that? Why, why, are you, why are you ridiculous? So, long story short, I didn't wear my hood at all. Um, but so this hat is, I believe, felted wool. And it was, it's warm. And it's more waterproof than not wearing anything. But when it was pouring, I had water just, <laughs> just absolutely dripping down the bill of this hat. Like any any time I took it off or went to bow, like just a puddle would form at my feet. And sometimes when it was windy, you might be thinking, how is it possible that the feathers did not blow away? I had other things. Occasionally, you know, someone would come up and give me a flower or something, and I'd always put it in my hat. Those would blow away. But there's actually a pin here that the feathers go inside, that keeps uh, the feathers there in the hat. And so the hat actually became a very major part of the way that I play the character. I, I, I'm, I play around with it an awful lot. It's, it, it's like, it's more of an extension of my arm than the sword is at a certain point. We always like to bring it back to the fantasy medieval adventurer and what translates from film. I'm an actor, you know, this isn't film, but what translates from the theatrical line of what it is that we see into real world uh, applicability. That's, that's really what I'm curious about. So wearing all of this, uh, especially once we add the bow, and I now lose the use of one of my hands always because I'm always holding it, I now have one hand and I'm wearing things on my back, all around my waist, and it really, there is, there, there is such a thing as having too much stuff. <laughs> um, I've got technically three bladed weapons on me in the form of my dagger, my sword, and my eating knife. I have the bow, I have the quiver on my back. You know, it's a, it's a lot of gear to be wearing, and a lot of stuff that's sort of like the water bottle bouncing up against my thigh there. Um, I, I feel kind of I feel kind of weighed down, and it looks good. And I'm not required to do anything particularly athletic during the fair. If someone were to come up to me and be like, "Okay, duel me," I'd have to take stuff off in order to do that. Like I am not combat ready at the moment, which is fine because that's not what I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be a character. I'm supposed to look like I'm combat ready. But it's just sort of interesting to think about, you know, from from our perspective here as a fantasy medieval adventurer, I'm not. I might look like it, but I'm not. And maybe that's something to consider for, you know, as you're designing, you know, D&D characters or whatever as well, um, if you care about that sort of immersion. But wearing this many weapons, maybe just pick one, you know? Maybe just have one or two. <laughs> so it, it's really not conducive to actual adventuring, this setup. The first thing I would change is I would get rid of the bracers, um, and I, want, I would want to find a way to um, wear the sword differently somehow or, or maybe even ditch it all together if if i was if i was doing archery there is no reason for me to have all of this all at once unless i know that i'm going like into battle or something so i'd want to find a way to maybe attach the sword to the quiver or something which means i would need a shorter sword because the blade on this is just too long to draw from the back unless i have a shabbard so that's something i'm going to be looking into um and, and to be completely honest, as much of an absolute privilege as it was to use this bow, personally as an, and it really fits for Robin Hood. Like, there, like there's nothing else I would use, you know, for, for Robin Hood. That's not true. There's other stuff I would use, maybe a, like a full-on Yu Long bow. But like, th what I'm saying is, personally as an adventurer, if I were to be going out, I would want a shorter bow. Um, because just the less things that I'm carrying, the better. And the smaller the things that I'm carrying, the better. This bottle is really epic, but there's got to be a different way for me to wear it. And like, I have to wear it while I'm at the fair because walking around for seven and a half or whatever hours straight, um, you want to take as few breaks as possible because you're there to do a job. You're there to entertain the guests. So you don't want to have to keep going to fill your cup. And I'm already holding a bow. Like, I don't really want to be carrying around a cup also. I can't do anything. I can't even take off my hat to bow to someone when I see them. So there's got to be a better way to, to wear the bottle on me than on my belt. Hi, it's Future Kramer again. Not with a message this time, but unfortunately on the very last day of fair, this happened to the bottle that I made. And that is because I did something 
just slightly too athletic. Uh, and the latch that was keeping the bottle attached to my belt came undone and it fell directly lip first Which was the only part of the bottle that wasn't covered in leather uh, Onto a concrete floor and it, it shattered the neck of the bottle never fear. I anticipated this That's why I made it um, the way that I made it so that I could easily take the leather off and replace it over a new bottle of a similar size So there's nothing to worry about. I made it to be expendable but uh, I figured I would share that that is what happens. And that's partly why I do things on this channel, so that I can test things, make mistakes, and then hopefully you can avoid them so that my things will break and yours won't. All right, back. But so in some ways, this, this full kit is very similar to what it is that I wear um, on, a, on, a, on a daily basis, quote unquote. I have my sword, I have a sword, I have my dagger, I have my sax knife, eating knife has stayed the same. Um, and then, and then, as far as, as as costume pieces go, I mean, medieval costumes for men are pretty simple, and you know, I have talked about that. Um, but it's essentially just your base, and then your overlayer, and then a hood, and you're and you're and you're pretty much good. Um, and it, and then it's just the way that those things are designed and how it is that they're made that sort of elevates that into being something else. I have all of these different textures on me. I have suede, I have leather, I have linen, I have uh, the sort of burlap material. But because it's so similar, it's really given me, it's really given me pause to think about what it is that I would change about my own garb. Yes. So my friends, Thank you for joining me here today. I do hope I will see thee again very soon, but in the meantime, I would like to wish you good luck on your adventures.